So lately in the last week, there's been a slew of articles coming out about how Apple has opened its own micro LED plant in California in order to invest and produce its own micro LED displays. And now after that article, there has been a significant growth of interest about what are micro LEDs and what makes them so different compared to OLEDs or traditional LCDs. Well, let's check the tech and find out. So at the moment, if I have to make some predictions, it looks like micro LEDs are going to be the next big thing in display tech. So they're easily scalable too, from something as small as a smartwatch to something that could be as large as Samsung's huge micro LED TV they showed off at CES. Alright, so right now OLEDs are in their spotlight. They're kind of like the darling child of the industry. Everyone wants them and people who can't get them have to settle and get LCD screens. Samsung has been a significant driving force in the innovation and production of OLED panels themselves. And you can see this in their very crispy and true to life AMOLED displays that they place in their Galaxy line of phones as well as their notes and the fact that Apple solely buys its OLED panels from Samsung. I mean, I really can't stress just how much of importance Samsung as a company has in the pushing of this technology to where it is today. And a little more detail about that Apple thing I told you about. Apple makes the color signs and the specifications while Samsung produces it at its plants because they're the only ones that can scale the production as high as what Apple wants or really as high as Apple needs it to be. But no matter how well you splice and dice it, there are some inherent flaws of OLED displays. Unlike liquid crystal LCDs, OLEDs, and I'm talking about OLEDs of any variety, from Samsung's Super AMOLED display as well as LG's P OLED display. All of these types of panels will experience some kind of burden in their lifespan, little down the road. And these could honestly range from a wide varying of factors, such as having the brightness way too high for the screen to handle, or having a really high contrast image staying static on the screen for longer than you should. But for our phones, us consumers really don't have to worry about that issue that much, because OEMs have made up some pretty clever little trick in the software in order to mitigate this as much as possible. One of the most well-known tricks is to embed it into the software itself. If you have some static image, stay still for too long, and we could think about um, Android's navigation bar in the bottom, as well as iOS's status bar on top, you'll have those static images shift slightly to the left or right just by one pixel. Something we wouldn't notice just from looking at it, but something that can really do miles for display itself. By moving the picture just by one pixel, you allow the one that's been on the longest to rest while you're activating some others to pick up the slack, decreasing the amount of time a given pixel has to be under load. And this trick, combined with all the other techniques that OEMs use, are all designed to hold off the inevitability of display burden for as long as possible, or at least until you buy a new phone. Now here is where we get to the fun part about micro LEDs. What micro LEDs can do is they can offer the same infinite black levels that OLEDs can do by individually turning off pixels as well. So because those pixels are technically off, they also get the benefit of that improved battery life that OLEDs can give. Also, micro LEDs can produce the same amount of brightness as a liquid crystal LCD can at 90% of the energy usage. So that's a huge efficiency gain there. When compared to OLEDs, you're ballparking around 45 to 50%. But if you can produce the same amount of brightness when using less energy, the gains there are on the table. You just can't deny it. Micro LEDs overall look like a better deal. And this here should be a quantum leap in battery life because the main reason why our phones drain battery is really mostly because of the display. And this really, and this kind of is important since battery technology has been stagnant in the last what, two decades lately, where the only way you can increase battery life is by optimizing your software or by just putting a bigger battery in. And to me, the most important pro about micro LEDs is their lifespan. Because micro LEDs don't use organic materials to produce their blue light, they can theoretically on paper run even longer than OLEDs can since they don't experience that dropping off point. And it looks like they can last longer than traditional LCDs can before they start experiencing their end of life color shift. All right, so here comes the bad news and the splash of water about this amazing technology. As great as micro LEDs are and the potential they can bring, they are so prohibitively expensive to build right now. They cost maybe four or five times the amount to manufacture and implement as compared to LCDs or OLED panels at the moment. This right here is the biggest barrier from investing and implementing this awesome technology. Another obstacle that's holding back micro LEDs is more structural and will take a longer time to get over, in my opinion. It's the fact that 
there's so much invested in OLEDs already. You have companies like LG and Japan Display, which have recently dropped big wads of cash into OLEDs. I'm not talking about millions, I'm talking about billions into dethroning Samsung from its monopoly status in OLED production. They are trying to increase their rate of production, the quality of their yield, as well as experiment with bendable displays. When you have so much money on the line for OLEDs already, it's kind of hard to convince someone that we need to switch over to micro LEDs. So this is also another factor that could hold the implementation of the new tech just a little more, maybe a year or three. So right now, those are the biggest hurdles that are holding back micro LEDs from going into the mainstream. Aside from the huge money cost of actually ramping up production and investing in it, we also have some issues manufacturing the micro LED panel. With our current technology and the way we do things, we can place micro LEDs on the back panel at around plus or minus 34 micrometers of accuracy. What we need to shoot for is 1.5 micrometers plus or minus. And that is a 95% difference. Until all of these things can come converging together to produce a cost-effective display and produce a technique that can place these diodes at the proper accuracy, as well as setting up the production facilities, it's gonna be a while. One thing to know, however, because of the difficulty of making high density pixel count displays with micro LEDs, we're probably gonna see them first proliferate into smartwatches like a Gear or an Apple Watch. Since they don't really need that high of a pixel count to achieve retina status, we're quite a bit away from seeing maturity in this field of technology, but I'd probably ballpark it around 2020 to 2021 until we start seeing the first concept phones. I'm betting there and we're probably going to see a year after that to get our first pioneering phone with micro leds probably from samsung or a chinese vendor and if we're using the path as a historical guider it'll probably take a while before apple starts implementing it into their phones as well because they're never the first in something but they always seem to perfect it but who knows that could change because right now from the articles that i will post below if you want to see them apple is the only company that's openly trying to invest and move resources and talent into micro leds it seems like they're trying to secure this component away from third parties in order to finalize their supply lines even more. And this makes sense for a company like Apple. If they, if they can cut off one more loose end, they can have an even more rock solid iPhone. And they won't have to deal with the premium they'd have to pay to buy a third party display. Who knows, someday you might even see an Apple micro LED display on an Android phone one day. But probably not. That's kind of a long shot, huh? Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just drop them down in the comment section below. I'll be posting some of the resources I use in the description section if you guys wanna check them out. And if you liked what you saw, go ahead and like the video. And if you wanna see more stuff like this, go ahead and sub. All right, see ya.